Would you please stand and let us sing together hymn number 157, I'm sorry, hymn number 57, verses 1, 2, and 7. And I love this song, Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. seated. First of all, I want to welcome each and every one of you to this time of worship here at the Sardis Methodist Church. It's my privilege and my pleasure to do that. For those that are joining us via the internet, we welcome you. And our prayer is that as we lift everything up in praise, that, that the blessings will come down. I love this hymn, Oh, for a Thousand Tongues to Sing. And uh, some of you all may notice that I'm not liturgically correct this morning, that instead of having on the green that represents ordinary time, I've got on a red stole today. And the reason that I have on this red stole today is that because for the past few days I've been in a place where it seemed like there were a thousand tongues singing God's praise. We had the opportunity and the privilege to be at St. Simon's this past weekend, and I wear the red stole in celebration of our newest elder, Reverend Nathan Ballou. So let's give him. And what, 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 what an exciting time it was. It was just an awesome. I mean, the worship was great. And uh, I had the privilege of putting a red stole on him. More about that in the newsletter to come this week. Um, I need to say, too, that... Uh, if you're interested in helping with the Georgia Tech mission, um, there's a sign up in the Narthex. You can either serve or you can break, bake some kind of a dessert or, or provide some kind of a dessert or fruit. And uh, Reverend Nathan's going to be over there fellowshipping with the, uh, with the students at the Georgia Tech Wesley Foundation. So, uh, so if you can help with that, please sign up uh, uh, in the Narthex. Anything else I need to say? If not, let us pray. Most gracious and eternal God, as we come to this time of worship, our prayer is that you would pour out your spirit, that we might know your presence, and that as we feel your presence, we might have the security that comes with lifting you in praise. Lord, bless and keep this time of worship, and we ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. 
Time for congregational hymns, so if there's some particular ones that you'd like to sing, let us pick a couple or three and, and do that. Claudia? 526? just hit me. If Jesus is your friend, then you're bound for the promised land. So we can hook those two together. Uh, is there another one? 467.
first don't know about that. that one. Um, that was one of my mom's favorite songs, and I can remember lying in the bed some mornings, and she would be up before me, and I would hear those notes ringing through the house. Where he leads me, I will follow. I'll go with him. I'll go with him all the way. So amen. Amen. Thank you, Carlotta. If the ushers would please come at this time. Lord God, as we gather in this space, we, we thank you that you have poured out your bounty on us. Lord, you've blessed us materially, you've blessed us spiritually. And Lord, as we give these gifts back to you out of that which you have given to us, our prayer is that we might use it to bring someone into an encounter with the risen Christ, that they might have the joy, that they might have the assurance that we share and we pray these things in his mighty and powerful name. And God's children all said, Amen. Remain standing and let us share our Psalter that is now printed uh, in, our, in our worship bulletin. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be shaken, but endures forever. The scepter of the wicked will not remain over the land allotted to the righteous. For then the righteous might use their hands to do evil. Lord, do good to those who are good and to those who are upright in heart. Please be seated. As we come to our time of prayer, as, as usual, I just ask that we would keep the, the leaders of our country in our prayers. We would ask that we would, uh, that we would keep those who wrestle with illnesses and those who wrestle with, with issues and challenges in their lives in our prayers. And as we do after the worship service is concluded, we'll take a period of time and have, uh, and have special prayers. So let's just take a moment of silence and then go to the Lord in prayer.
Lord God, as we gather, we come first because we love you. And we love you because you have first loved us. Lord, we also come today with a spirit of thanksgiving, thanking you for all that you've done in our lives, for all that you do for us today, for all that you continue to do and all that you will do. Lord, we have so much to be thankful for. Thankful that you touched us this morning and woke us up. Thankful that, that you have given us sound mind. But Lord, as we come today, we also come with, with heavy hearts. Hearts that there's so much chaos in our world. Heavy hearts that there seems to be so much that, that creates division within us. And Lord, we just pray that in some way that you might intercede, that we might have the peace of God that passes all understanding. Lord, we pray for those in leadership roles in the, in the government at all levels. We pray for those in leadership roles in the church, that they, might, that they might lead our country, that they might lead our world, and that it might be the world that, that you desire. Lord, so often we say in our prayers, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we truly come today asking that your will might be done on earth that we might see a place that is like heaven. Lord, that as we look at each other, we might see Jesus. We might see the image of God that you have put in each and every one of us. And Lord, we pray for this church and the mission that you have given it. And we thank you that you have provided all that we need to go forward and to share the good news of Christ Jesus in this community. And now, Lord, we pray together those words that, that you gave the disciples, the model prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If you'd stand now as we prepare ourselves for the sermon, and we're going to sing hymn number 384, Love Divine, All Love's Excelling. <laughs>
be seated. I want to share with you today from the 13th chapter of the gospel, I'm sorry, the 13th chapter of Paul's letter to the church at Corinth. And um, I want to read this one from the, from the translation that's known as the message. And I want you to hear how Eugene Peterson frames this. If I speak with human eloquence and angelic ecstasy, but don't have love, I am nothing but the cranking of a rusty gate. If I speak God's word with power, revealing all his mysteries and making everything plain as day, and if I have the faith that says to a mountain jump and it jumps but don't love, I'm nothing. If I give everything I own to the poor and even go to the stake to be burned as a martyr, but I don't love, I've gotten nowhere. So no matter what I say, what I believe, and what I do, I'm bankrupt without love. Love never gives up. It cares more for others than for self. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love doesn't strut, doesn't have a swelled head, doesn't force itself on others, isn't always me first, doesn't fly off the handle, doesn't keep score of the sins of others, doesn't revel when others grovel, takes pleasure in the flowering of truth, puts up with anything, trusts God always, always looks for the best, never looks back, but keeps going to the end. But for right now, until that completeness, we have three things to do to lead us toward that consummation. Trust steadily in God, hope unswervingly, love extravagantly, and the best of the three is love. The word of God for the people of God. This passage is a very, very personal passage for me because almost 50 years ago, as a layperson, the first time I ever spoke from a pulpit in a church, it was this passage of scripture that I spoke from. The passage that is very familiar to many of us, it's, it's often read at weddings and has become known as the love chapter in the Bible. The words of Paul that that he shares with us give a full description of what agape love looks like. Agape love, the way that God loves each and every one of us. You know, I thought about that, and, and there was a song that came to my mind. It was a secular song that, that I, I, I want to say that it was Diana Ross sang, and it was one of those, the title of the song was Love Child. And it was a song about a child who was conceived out of wedlock. However, I would submit to you this morning that, that we are all love children because what the scripture says, that out of his great love for us, God has offered us the opportunity to be called his children, and that is what we are. Each and every one of us is a designer original created out of the love of the one that created the universe. As we explore this morning the thought of loving as God loves, I want to begin with the definition of two words. The first word is because. This word, according to the dictionary, identifies the reason for some action. In other words, why something happened. Some of you may remember that from elementary school that using a word in a sentence helps remember its meaning, so let me do that. I thought about not coming to church this morning because after I was returning from Nathan's ordination, we got stuck in a traffic jam on I-95 that lasted for an hour and it was parking lot creep and beep. To top that off, there was heavy rain a uh, part of the rest of the way. And by the time we got home, I was simply tired. However, I decided to come because I want to thank God 
for the grace that he has given me through Jesus Christ. The second word is in spite, which really isn't a word at all. It's an idiom if you go consult the grammar. But I'll treat it like it's a word because it conveys the meaning of an action taken in disregard or defiance. The dictionary says notwithstanding. So I now want to rephrase the sentence I shared with you earlier. I thought about not coming to church this morning because all of the reasons I named earlier. However, I decided to come in spite of being tired and thank God for his grace. As we explore together the thought of loving as God loves, it's the word because that helps us understand the why of loving as God loves. And is the idiom in spite that helps us know how the how of loving as God loves. The Apostle John provides us with the answer to the why of the question, why we love. We love because. And what John says is that we love because he first loved us. And what I want you to understand is that, that John was speaking to a culture that is much like the culture that we face today a time when there was cultural, philosophical, political, and religious division. It was a time when the Christian church stood as a beacon of hope in a world of chaos. And as Christians, we have the opportunity to bring the peace of Christ into a world today that struggles where people seek to find peace and hope. Frederick Whitfield committed John's words to music, that familiar hymn, Oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. What the Bible is telling us is that we are to love God in a way that we love nothing else. We are to love God with all of our hearts, all of our minds, and all of our souls. And it is from this love that we experience, this love that we give to God, that our sense of worship springs. It is from the, God, from the love of God that our love springs forth. We love and worship because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, choosing us in Christ Jesus before the foundation of the world. You were never an afterthought before God stood in the, in the Garden of Eden and blew the breath of life into humanity. There was a plan to save humankind because God knew exactly what was going to happen. It's only when you come to an understanding of what it is that God has done for you, what it is has God has done for me. It's only when we come to an understanding of the realization of what a gift God's grace is. And let us understand something about this. Love is, is not something that God simply does. Love is something that God is. What the Bible says is that God is love. God loves beyond our dreams. God loves extravagantly. God loves without limit. You know, I, I, I thought about this and, and the picture that came to me. Anybody in here ever been to the Grand Canyon? Raise your hand. Now, I want to ask you the question. When you started there, what was your expectation? And when you got there, was not your expectation exceeded? You see, that's the way the, love of, the way the love of God is. It doesn't matter what your expectations are of God's love. It's bigger than that. Whatever we might imagine God's love for us to be, it's far deeper, it's far steadier, and it's far gentler than we could ever imagine. You see, it can't be manipulated or bargained with. It can't be earned or it can't be lost. And in the words of the psalm that we shared this morning, it surrounds us just as the mountains surround Jerusalem. You know, when you get to a point that you're like Jeremiah and you realize the magnitude of God's love, 
Jeremiah's words resonate. It burns like a fire in your heart, like a fire in your bones. It wears you out trying to to keep it in. It's, It's something that you just can't do. It's just so good that you have to share it with someone else. It's when each of us reaches that point in our relationship with God that we become a reflection of God's love, the love that died for us on Calvary. And we hang like chandeliers in the world, giving off the light of God's love. Why do we love? Why do we love? We love because God first loved us. This brings us to the second of our questions. How should we love? Paul's description of what true agape love is might be summed up in the idiom that we shared in the beginning. We love in spite of. You see, Jesus has given us a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples, women too. If you love one another, let us be reminded that the response to our love of God is praise and worship. However, when someone else is the object of our love, the purpose is to encourage that person to be all that God has created them to be. God alone is already perfect. God alone is already complete. The rest of us are on a journey to completeness. It's what the scripture said, when that completeness comes, the rest of us are on the track to perfection. Bishop Jones, during the ordination process, yesterday posed some questions, the historic questions that that came from John Wesley, questions that are prescribed for all Methodist clergy. And one of those questions is, are you going on to perfection? Thank God they didn't ask, are you perfect? All of us would have failed the test. Are you going on to perfection? And the second one is, do you expect to be made perfect in love? Perfection in love that is much different from the picture that comes to mind when we hear the word perfection. And and let me sum up that over some period of 30 years, John and Charles Wesley wrote a, a, a treatise that's called A Brief Account of Christian Perfection. And it was their belief that in this life, a person could become perfect in love. The perfection of which they speak is the state of being when we come to fully loving, loving God and loving each and every one just as important because the image of God is in each and every one of us. Of loving in spite of as God loves, this is how to love, this is how love begins when we listen to the words of Paul. Love is patient, he says, love is kind. The message makes it plain as I've shared, but God has put his love on the line for us by offering his son in sacrificial death while we were of no use whatever to him. If we are to love as God loves, it must mean that we are willing to put ourselves on the line for those who are of no use to us whatever. You know, as I listened to some of the preaching at the ordination and at the annual conference that we attended, there were some things that dredged up some people that I carried grudges against and, and, and I had to put those aside. And, 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 and what was laid on me was that I needed to pray for them the same things that I pray for myself. Be reminded Be reminded that you have never met a mere mortal is what C.S. Lewis says. Each and every person you encounter is created in the image of God. And they deserve your patience and your kindness. Yet there is still more to love. Does not envy, does not boast, and is not proud. Love brings with it a power of humility. 
And true humility brings with it the freedom from guilt and resentment that we often carry when we carry a grudge. Being a doormat, being a doormat is not being humble. Nor is it giving up your self-identity to serve the needs, the desires, the whims of another person. Consider the interchange between the man who in our culture would be Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk, a man who the world would have said had everything. Jesus' comment to him was, give all you own to the poor and follow me. Think about what Jesus gave up. Not an even exchange. Humility would have said, yes, pride and arrogance says no. Humility calls us to set aside the deep attachments to things of the world, things that the world considers important, goods and social position, satisfaction at the expense of others, the right to dominate other persons in a relationship. Power, true power and freedom come from humility because we're on God's agenda and not the world's. Yet there is more loving like God loves because it means not flying off the handle at the slightest upset, extending the same compassion to someone else that you want for yourself. And I said something earlier about this, perhaps one of the most difficult parts is not keeping score, not carrying grudges from the past, you know, those that are from 10, 20, 30 years ago, or from yesterday. It means joining Jesus in his prayer from the cross, Father, forgive them, Father, forgive them, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. It means taking seriously what we say when we pray, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And let me continue with the thought that the love that enables this kind of forgiveness does not make wrong right. Rather, it confronts wrong with the object of seeking repentance. As you remember that, let us remember that Jesus never fails to confront sin. Yet he does it in such a way that the sinner is made more whole rather than being torn down. Hear these words. Some of you may remember the story of the woman caught in adultery. And, and Jesus sends her away with these words. Woman, where are your accusers? They aren't here to condemn you and neither am I. Go now and sin no more. This is the same kind of love that also energizes hope and trust. Hope that there is a future. Trust that God will keep his promises. We might ask ourselves, is it possible to love as God loves? And I would say to you that through the power of the Holy Spirit, the answer is yes. The answer is is yes. Anybody in here remember the name of a person by the name of Charles Roberts? Anybody remember that name? Well, let me refresh your memory. The date was October the 2nd, 2006. The place was a place called West Nichols Mine School. And he entered that school and killed five little Amish girls before committing suicide. Let me share with you a collage of the news bites regarding the incident. On the day of the shooting, a grandfather of one of the murdered Amish girls was heard warning some of the young relatives not to hate the killer, saying, we must not think evil of this man. Another explained, I don't think there's anybody here that wants to do anything but forgive and not only to reach out to those who have suffered a loss in a way, but to reach out to the family of the man who committed these acts. A Roberts family spokesman said an Amish neighbor comforted the Roberts family hours after the shooting and extended forgiveness to them. 
the community members, the Amish community members visited and comforted his family, parents, parents-in-law. And one Amish man held Robert's sobbing father in his arms reportedly for as long as an hour. I believe that the response of the Amish community gives us a picture of what it means to love as God loves. A picture of what it means to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. And I encourage each and every one of you to invite God's Holy Spirit to empower you, to make you real in the promise that the fruit of the Spirit first is love, love that overcomes, love that transforms. To love as God loves means that we love because he first loved us and that we love in spite of any and everything. The question before each and every one of us this morning is, are we willing to walk in the footsteps of Jesus? Are we willing to love as God loves? You know, I'm going to change something because uh, instead of singing, oh, how I love Jesus, we're going to sing, Jesus loves me, this I know. It's hymn number 191, and I'm going to ask these beautiful young ladies to come and help me sing this song. I hope I can get up. that I want to do. As long as I'm down here, and as long as they're down here, I'm going to invite Nathan and Sarah and Wesley to come down, and I want all of you all to, uh, to kind of come and gather around so that we can pray over this family uh, as they're dedicating themselves to a life of ministry. So, so if you all would just kind of come on down. Uh, Stuart, you and, 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 and Claudia can bring the, 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 the scepters and we do this. Come on down. I know y'all are Methodists and you like to sit on the back row, but, but we, go, we go invite everybody to come down. Thank you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, I did have a chance yesterday uh, to, to, to lay hands on him when Bishop Jones was 
was doing the consecration or the ordination, so, so let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for this family. We thank you for the dedication that they have to the ministry in this community. And our prayer is that, that you would pour out the Holy Spirit on them, that they would know the full power that comes from walking with Jesus. And Lord, as we seek to be about the business of sharing the good news of Christ Jesus, let us be armor bearers as, as Nathan and, 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 and this family go forth in this community to share the good news of Christ Jesus. Lord, people need Jesus. People need Jesus. And Lord, our prayer is that, that all that we do might glorify you and that someone might come into a saving knowledge of the risen Christ. We pray these things in Christ Jesus. And God's children all said, Amen. 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 Thank you. Now... Yeah. <laughs>